Hi, y'all. Welcome to Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. It is Monday, best day of the week, work week, and I hate to bore y'all with the details of all this celebration of how we funded tops 100% by the 100% funded universities. We're going to get to that as they continue to pound our college students, despite Bell Edwards and the media telling us all these white lies about how everything's funded. And, boy, did they just pop the students in the mouth again. And I'll get to that in just a second. Anyway, great to have you. Hope you had a great weekend. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Brian, I'm taking it. Mark's in on 4th of July, right? Mark is in on the 4th of July. Okay, yeah. I hope everybody has a great 4th. And uh, I'm going to take that Wednesday off. And uh, Mark Pope is uh, nice enough to come in on the 4th of July. Is, is, are you in or Bernie's in? Uh, Rob is in. Rob, oh Rob's in. <laughs> that ought to be fun. <laughs> I might have to even listen to that one. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. So anyway, good. Rob will be in too. So I'm sure they have a good time. All righty, eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson, that's a hotline. I got to tell you, folks, I got a call from a good friend of mine, and he was telling me this story, and he sent me the information. It, it, this is this is one of those stories that really, really frustrates me. I got to tell you, and I'm frustrated for my, my friends that are sending their kids to college. All right, we passed the budget, and the, the crazy, crazy budget, raising mega, mega taxes. And then the governor celebrates. We got tops 100% funded. They'll be going to universities that are 100% funded. And I heard all the rhetoric. By the way, is David Calicott called to be on the program yet? I haven't heard from him. Many times he comes on crying about money. <laughs> Comes on crying about money, and they wasn't part of this conspiracy, which makes me really believe that. And I just told him when they pay it all, make sure you come back, and he had come back. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you don't come back and talk to us about this, tell him don't call next year or cry when the budget uh, the budget screwed up next year, too. By the way, they're already projecting that in two years the budget will have a billion-dollar deficit. I'll get to that in a little bit. Robert Travis Scott, uh, who who was uh, who's the head of poor now, and uh, he says a billion dollars in two years. But it's election year. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk oh, about we're talking about stability. Oh, we oh. got so much stability right now. Oh yeah. The, the biggest lie ever told of us was it was two billion dollar deficit when Edwards inherited, and they keep saying that. It's it's just unbelievable. But but here's what disappoints me, folks. I I don't want college students coming out of school with mega debt. I don't think they ought to have to have that. But I can promise you, the people that don't care about how much debt college students have, or it's governor. The legislature, for the most part, and especially the people at the head of these boards, these governing boards with education, and, and the college professors and presidents, they don't give a dang either. They just don't care. They don't care how much you go into debt. Folks, they really don't. They don't give a rat's rear end about any of that. And uh, what's, what's frustrating to me is I do, because I've been there and done that. So four days... Folks, four days after we declared education fully funded, after I saw college presidents and people bragging by, well, we just, we need, we got what we wanted. We got what we wanted. We got what we want. We got every penny we want. We're fully funded. That's what we was told. That's what you read in these newspaper articles and the Gannett and the Beams articles and the, and the ignorance of the, uh, the advocate. You read, they're fully funded. Well, if they fully funded, why did the Louisiana State, the board, why did the board approve almost $600 in new fees to the students? $282 per semester fee hike for full-time students. I thought we funded it. I thought we funded everything. How in the world, four days after the session, can a governing board raise fees or taxes, whatever you want to call them? How can they do this? They said we were fully funded. And, of course, according to this, according to this, the fees that help with pay raises and other expenses. Melinda Desolate, or Desolate, I even say her name, Associated Press, on Friday. They raised the fees on students 
almost $600 a year, which is, by the way, the same number they did last year. Because they don't care. They just go keep popping people and students and parents in the mouth every chance they get. All for pay raises. The price hike approved Friday drew worries. The consistent annual increases could price some school students out of school. No, they don't. They don't care. You remember the, and it was Northwest and it was Boys and Girls State. And I, and I know uh, Dr. Maggio from there. He's a great guy. I really like him. Smart guy. I'm so happy he got that job. I can't see straight. But he showed them cheering. Cheering after TOPS was approved or the budget was passed and it funded the TOPS 100%. They were cheering that they didn't have to pay any more money. I wonder if they would have asked them, by the way, four days later, and Bell Edwards and Jay Dar knew this was coming, and his board acts like, well, we didn't want to do this. We were. You're not worried about it. You did it last year. You do it this year. And you do it again next year. This ought to make, listen. Republicans, Democrats, liberal, conservatives, all these people got kids going to school. It ought to make everybody mad as hell at this board. And Governor Edwards, who helped put some of these people, if not all of them, they ought to be mad as you know what at what the governor and some of these people in the legislature just voted for, only to have this board of supervisors come back and slap the back of the heads of the students. By the way, they passed the similar fee increase last year, and they got the audacity to say the price hike approved Friday drew worries. The consistent annual increases could price some students out of school. Oh, yeah. You know what they're going to do, Brandon? They're going to run to Alabama. <laughs> Remember that story? They're going to Alabama. If Tops has cut 20%, they're going to Alabama, which is a bunch of hogwash. They increased fees eleven, twelve hundred dollars $1,200 over the last uh calendar year from August to August, $1,200, just take it out of your pocket if you want to come to school, and students ought to be upset about this. I guarantee you they ask that same group after they cheered about tops that it's okay, but let me tell you now, you can cheer a boo, whatever you want to do. we also taking another $600 out of your pocket with fees like we did last year. You think those same children, young men and women would have cheered? They wouldn't have cheered. They'd have been upset. Every dollar counts. And they don't care to universities. They really don't. I don't care how mad they get at me. They do not care about your debt. They do not care how much it costs you. They just want their six-figure salaries to keep getting higher and every time it to get up. As a higher education is way out of hand with this money. And the, and the people in the media and the press, they don't care. They just write stories they don't have a clue about. But I know this. Because I used to write the check, and the check I wrote for my kids were the, were the fees and stuff. And it was heavy back then because Jindal was doing this. Bell Edwards is doing the same thing. Except in the media, he didn't get credit for it. He inherited a $2 billion budget, Moon, which was the biggest lie that's ever been told in Louisiana. But even if they back boosted charges on students, some LSU Board of Supervisors members worried the fees are growing too burdensome for lower and middle class students and their families. Really? You all of a sudden listen, how you like this, Brandon? This is almost like I ain't raising taxes. Oh, we raised the fees, but man, we are worried about them paying for it. Why did you raise the dang fees then? At LSU, why did you raise the fees? And then you come back and say, well, I ain't doing that. Well, why did you do it? <laughs> God have mercy. I'm tired of these politicians. These are politicians. I ain't doing that. Then why'd you do it? I'll tell you what, Brian, it's a good idea for when you've been a kid and you, your mom or daddy got you busted for something you didn't do. Well, mama, I hated doing that. Well, it's okay then. So if you hated doing it, it don't matter if you've done it. These are grown-ups. This, we're not, we're not dealing with the planet of apes here. We're dealing with grown-ups, men and women, grown-ups. I ain't doing that. Why'd you do it? Even if back-boosted charges on students, and they popping students left, left and right, knocking them in the back of the head. This is the honor code system we have here now, folks. 
They, four days, four days after the session, after higher ed claimed that everything's cool now. We got our money. We're cool. We're fully funded. Four days later, what do they do? They pop students with higher fees again, and they even admit it in one of the articles that I read that this is the second time in two years for about the same amount of money in the last two years. I mean, come on, folks. This is what they're doing to us. They, four days after everybody left town, four days after everybody left, why didn't they tell us, well, you know what, we could come up with some of the money. We'll just pop the students in the mouth again. Because when you go up to, to go to school and you got, they say, fees, you just pay them. The presidents of the campuses camped out on the Capitol, claiming their core funding was all they needed. This was written time and time again. All we need is our core funding. They got their core funding, and they turned around, and they knew this board would do this, and the board did it. Then they apologized. Well, you know, maybe we didn't. We shouldn't have done that. We didn't want to do it. I hate doing this, and they do it anyway. Folks, people ought to be mad at this, that we are being used Used to no end by politicians. This is grown-ups. This ain't the planet of the apes. This is grown-ups. Popping students and families over and over again. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. I can't believe what they're doing to the middle working class people in this state. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Yeah, these, I was reading these LSU board members, Stephen Von Perry who studied in Russia under Lenin. <laughs> I'm not making it up. Bobby Yarborough. These are LSU boards. Ronald Anderson. Lee Mallet, who gave heavily to Jindal and Bell Edwards. Uh, District J. Blossman. He used to be a PCS guy, PSC guy, I believe. Ramey Storns. James Williams, Jimmy Woods, he gave the Bell Edwards to. Glenn Armenton gives to any Democrat. <laughs> uh, Mary Warner, big liberal leftist Democrat, gave money to. Uh, Jones gave money. You know, just the James Moore, he, I know Mr. James Moore, he's from the 5th Congressional District, I'm personally annoying. He always gives money to all sides. He covers all, all, all bets. But these are the people that the kids going to LSU that, uh, they just raised. They just took 14 more million out of their pockets. And folks, this is the things that, that, that bothers me. They're now worried that this could hurt lower and middle class students. That fees are growing too burdensome. Quit passing them. How hard is this? This is a good example. We need more. We gotta have more. We need more. All of these college presidents said they only need was their core funding and they were good to go. And why in the world did they raise fees like this? If the core funding was all they needed, all the crying and bickering, and we don't have enough money, and Bell Edwards claiming we are 100% tops funded, that 100% funded universities, why do they need more money? Why do they keep jacking up the fees? People, y'all know if you're going to school. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. I'm telling you, they don't care about how much debt you run up. They do not care about your financial situation. They don't. And then after the fact, after they pass them, well, we kind of worried that uh, the worries, the consistent annual increases could price some of the students. I don't care about that. That's for after show. Some LSU Board of Supervisors members worried the fees are growing too burdensome on the lower middle. Because, by the way, let me tell you the rest of the story of this. Not one of these people stood up in protest against this, Brandon. It was unanimous on the vote. But to make it look good, see how politics is played here? We can jam you up, hit you up in the mouth, and then make them an excuse why I did it. Because they don't care. All these people on these boards, most of these people have made their money and then some. They don't care. 
Then we write in articles, you know, we don't pass the tops. Well, you got people going to Alabama. Oh, that's just a bunch of bunk written by the advocate. Times speaker you in the Gannett newspapers. By the way, I made the advocate. They, they popped me. They, can you believe they call me a right wing talk show? They really hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, Brandon walked in and I was crying. Brandon didn't know it. I just told him, Brandon, do I sound like a politician now? I was in here just a crying. They had hurt me so hard calling me a right wing talk show. <laughs> because I care about the truth. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing as I watch this. It, it really is. By the way, a legal immigrant arrested for starting a Colorado fire that charred 40 acres. I just opened them borders, man. Came across during the Barack Obama years. Decided he'd go ahead and, uh, 41,292 acres and is 0% contained at this point, Brandon. Right? Bring us some more of them illegals over here, folks. Bring them all in. Let them all come in here. I don't understand why I don't stay in those great countries that they come from. That's, that's, that's an amazing thing to watch. All right. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. By the way, there's comments from the great John Alario. Wait till you get his comments. <laughs> it's almost comical. It really is. And by the way, Mark Ballard wrote a piece, History Not on the Governor John Bell Ever's Side Regarding Re-Election. Uh, hey, Mark, I was the first one to call that. I called it right after he won. That's what Mark Ballard just wrote a piece. He's the one calling me a right-wing talk show. A right-winger. Me. Good-looking guy like me. Take a break. You're listening to Moon Graffon Show, 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Just cranking up. We'll be right back. Hi, y'all. All. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. If you'd like to be part of the program, your opportunity to be a voice. All right, let's jump gears. A guy that's hosting my program in a week or two, but never gave me the date yet. <laughs> Brett Guyman, former representative, business owner. Brett, how you doing, bud? Moon, I'm fine. How are you? I didn't know I was hosting your show. What date am I hosting? I, I sent it to you the other day. I sent you the dates I had for you. I can't believe you're saying that on air. Can I, can I cut him off? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, good to hear from you. All right, brother. Uh, if you've been hearing me at all today, and, of course, I visited with you some on the weekend, uh, you got to be puzzled about what's going on uh, after, uh, you know, I, I even got something from somebody, I'm not going to say the name, that the, the the university presidents, and I'm not cutting them. I know a couple of them to be good friends, but they camp there saying, we just need our base budget. We just need our base budget. We need a base budget. And all of a sudden they're getting fee increases on these students. And that's frustrating to me. Yes, but let me uh, clarify something. We, we spoke over the weekend. You were fishing. Uh, I, was. I was hanging sheetrock. No, I did. <laughs> we were doing what we were born to do. You was born okay. to work, and I was born sure to go people, fishing. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that, that people didn't think you and I were out, you know, fishing together because <laughs> you didn't invite me to go fishing. Just uh, wanted to clarify that. All right, you got me on that one. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, Moon, I, I, I tell you, Friday and, and Saturday when I was reading the articles about the higher ed board decision to raise fees, I was I was – I don't even I can't even put in words uh, what I, the anger that I was feeling about that whole situation where higher ed officials come to the legislature, they stand on the side of the House floor in the chamber, they they glare at their delegation members that represent their particular universities, and they they intimidate, they do anything they can to get the legislators to to pass bills to get the revenue that the university presidents are all seeking. They did that. They were successful again. The legislature passed a sales tax renewal to fully fund higher education, fully fund TOPS. Four days later, the board, made up of appointed members by various governors over the years, and the board votes to increase fees. And I, the only thing that comes to my mind is these guys are at the trough of the taxpayer dollars. They don't know how to quit. They are living on another planet because they have no idea what it's like for families, normal, average families out there trying to make it in today's economy, <clears throat> get, get the bills paid, and then, and then at some point send their kids to college and be able to afford that. 
these folks have no idea. Uh, they're completely out of touch. The timing of this was a, just astounding to me that four days after a, a, a third special session and all the budget drama we had, these guys decide to increase fees 5%. I, I, I just don't – I can't even get my hands around this. I, I don't understand it. Well, let me, let, me, let me throw something else at you. When the board starts saying things like, well, we hate to do that. We didn't really want to do it. And let me, let, me, let me quote you. Let me just quote it. The price hikes approved Friday drew worries. The consistent annual increases could price some students out of school. By the way, this is the second time they did it since last August. And about the same amount of money, according to one story. And they said, but even as the back-boosted charges on students, some LSU Board of Supervisors members worried the fees are growing too burdensome for lower- and middle-class students and families. Well, if they worried about it, why do it? That's my question to you. What do you mean you worried about it? You just passed it. I, I agree with you. And, and, and if they're worried about it, how did they vote? I, I read somewhere it was unanimous. I read the same thing. As a matter of fact, I was told it was unanimous. They didn't vote against it. By the way, did they say this? After the vote, or did they say this during the vote? Well, I don't see anything of anybody said that they worried about it during the vote. Uh, agreed. And and if you're worried about it, you don't vote for it. You just say no. We're gonna we're gonna live with what we have. We're gonna tighten our belt. We're gonna make do because the taxpayers are are tapped out, and the legislature has had a difficult time even coming up with what funding they've given us. Now we're not going to go back and increase fees. And and by the way, I read in the article that. They're going to use it for pay raises. Pay raises. For pay raises. Correct. And that I mean, that, that really fly but gas me too. Pay raises. That's a slap. That's a slap in the face, Moon. That it, look, I, I, I'm telling you, these folks are out of touch. Uh, I don't know many of them are on the board, uh, and I know a few of the university presidents. And, and like you said, coming into this, uh, some of them are fine, great people, doing a wonderful job. So this isn't a broad brush where they're all like that. But I can tell you, based on this decision right here, I can almost guarantee you that these people on serving, that are serving on this board are so out of touch with the average family in this state that they would make a decision like that. They just have no concept of what it's like for an average family to pay their bills and send their kids to college yeah. and hope that things are better for their kids than they were for them. They just yeah. they can't even comprehend that. Yeah, most of the people on this board, have, have, uh, I can't say every one of them, but most of them have made their money and made a lot of it. They really have. And, and yeah. so they're sitting here rubbing elbows with the presidents and people that make big money too, and they're saying, well, you know what, let's go ahead and do this and do this and do this. And But, but for them, to, after the fact, they act like, well, we worried about the low and middle income. No, you're not. You didn't worry about it last year because according to one article – let me say this was Melinda. She said uh, this is the second time in the last year that they raised about just as many fees. And I don't care how it comes. Now, you know, this is the sad thing about it, though, uh, uh, Brett. You got young, ki- you got kids and people at home still, just like I do. It, it doesn't really matter what you call it, a tax, a fee, or whatever. It still comes out the same pocket of the hardworking middle and lower um, uh, middle class people. It's still coming out no of your question. pocket. Call it what you want to call it. And it affects those folks disproportionately to, to, to how it affects those that are wealthy. And, Wait. and, and you know, the, the average middle class or low income family trying to, to make things better for their children and get them a college education, uh, you know, those fees are, are real. They're real. And Don't you know, you? one university president, I won't mention his name and I won't mention what campus, but I, I will tell you this it wasn't McNeese. Because okay, we're the best over here. In I knew that was coming, Nick. I knew that was coming, Brandon. Day. You see that? You see what I got to put up with? Just start telling him about the pink Speedo and, and the island with him. I bet he'll quit. I'd rather not hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> but this one university president made a public comment on social media that, that increasing the, 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 the sales tax renewal from 0.25 to point whatever they ended up getting. It, it's only $35 more on a on a $1,000 Whatever, whatever his analogy was, it's only thirty-five more dollars. That statement alone showed me that these people are just out of touch, because because that is just a that is just a the wrong thing to say to hardworking families that we just want another thirty-five dollars from you. We already took three hundred and fifty today, but now we want another thirty-five. It's just another thirty-five dollars. What's the big deal? Well, 
at some point it becomes a big deal. And a two hundred and fifty dollar increase in fees or whatever the number is based on the on the tuition rate uh, is significant amount of money for most families. Yeah. All right. Well, look, think about a lot of people that go to school. And I think everybody falls in this boat unless you just came from a wealthy family. Good for you. No problem. I had to go work every summer. I was telling Brandon, Brandon was kind of laughing at the jobs I had. I said, Brandon, I was on scholarship, so my parents, my dad especially, would make sure I had good jobs, pipeline, <clears throat> construction, plant working. I mean, every summer I had to go make money, and my mama took 100% of it because that helped pay the insurance on the car and have a little spending mm-hmm. money. So that's how we did it. And then I had to go get a second job, so I'd have some spending money during the summer. It was normally umpiring. You know what I'm saying? And so you had to put up with all the people hollering at you, telling you they made a bad call when I didn't make bad calls. That pro- I'll prove yeah, that on I, the radio every day. Just, <laughs> just this visual image of you being an umpire, I, I, I'm oh, not liking that Let me all. tell you something. I got a picture. Like Brandon's already said, I'm going to send you a picture of me umpiring back in the young days when I was about 22. Just so you can mm-hmm. get a picture of me. And by the way, I'm wearing clothes. All right, eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson has an outline. No, what's the funny is when I wanted to make the point. So when I went to school, and you did too, probably Brandon did. You had limited play money. Most of the time, you worked so you could get your school, so you could, you know what I mean, so you could go to school, so you could pay for your books, which is another racket. So you could pay your fees, so you could pay all that stuff. And most people have to go to work when they go to school. I mean, these right. guys throw up 600 bucks, 600 bucks to somebody in their teens or 20-something years old. That's a lot of money. No, it's a lot of money, Moon. It's a lot of money to a middle-class family who's already had the burden of, of their child going to college. Many uh, have moved away from home, so you have some living expenses. You have car, you have insurance, gas, you know, uh, food, you know, all the things that you have to provide uh, for your child if they're not living at home going to, to college. Or, but either, even if they're at home, there are some expenses involved. You know why I don't even think they, they care? You know why I don't think they care? Because they don't care about the debt that college students are running up. They don't care how much it is. Just let me yeah. make sure I get mine. Now, i got to tell you, that sounds like a hard attitude. That sounds like you're being really hard. It's not being hard. It's no, being you're, honest. They you're, don't you're care. Right, and, and look, I'm at the, you know, look, it's time to call them out. It's time to call it like it is. You know, we always try to be nice to our university presidents as legislators because we, we know the campuses are important to our communities and, and that higher education is a, is a good investment. And we understand all that. But at some point, it's time to just have a candid conversation with these folks about, you know, get your feedback on the planet that we live on and understand what's going on with, with the families in this state and, and how hard it is to make ends meet. And these things are serious when you start oh, yeah. continually adding fees to the cost of our college tuition. Let me do this, Brad. Let me take a quick break, bring you back on for another segment. At this time, you can look at the picture of me on Pine back in my early days. Oh, my hey, goodness. the Afro's there, the skinny body's there. And by the way, look how close uh, I was to the I base. Was, I was right on I the refuse, call. I refuse to look at the picture. <laughs> I refuse to look at the picture. Not going to happen. Oh, no, you got to look at it. One glance. One glance. Yes, All right, we yes, got to take a break. 844 766 6607. Hickson has a hotline. We'll talk to uh, Brett Guyman about a couple other things going on, too. So we'll be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Hi, hello. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844 766 6607. Hickson has a hotline. See, Brett, I, I used to call balls and strikes. I'm still calling balls and strikes. You didn't believe me, but I did. <laughs> Anyway, Brad, but you know, listen, you as disappointed about this, they're out of touch. Uh, I was told by some people higher up that the, the higher ed people were camped down there. All they wanted was their core funding. You can't make me believe Bel Air was darn and the group didn't know these people were going to pass this. They had to know that the, the higher ed was asking them, hey, give us some more fees. It's amazing. Higher ed, they say, is a business. They can ask, ask for somebody to pass fees on them. And really, it's on the students. It's on their customers. One day, the customers are not going to be able to do this anymore. One day, the customers are going to revolt. Well, it seems that way, or, or they're going to revolt by not being able to go at all, which defeats the whole purpose of what they're trying to accomplish. And and they are out of touch. And I, I asked uh, a higher ed official uh, over the weekend, did you know that you were going to raise fees while you were at the table begging for the amount of money you needed through increased sales tax. 
mm-hmm. because if you knew, you should have shared that with the legislature that, oh, by the way, we're going to go up 5% on fees as soon as you pass this tax renewal. Yeah. And I think they withheld that information, and I think that's dishonest. Uh, I, I think it's, again, I think it's out of touch uh, with, with the real world and what's been going on in the legislature with the families in this state. Uh, and, and I think it was the wrong thing to do, and I think the legislature at some point needs to call them out on it. Uh, well, that's been the problem. Like it is. Nobody, and this is just you and me talking, I'm not seeing anybody respond to this at all, which has been very frustrating. I mean, I'm talking about from elected officials, leaders, Republicans, Republican Party, nobody has said a word. Because, we, because, as, le- because as legislators, you typically don't call out your university. I mean, you just don't, don't, you just don't do that. Do you have and, to call and, out the university? Or do you have to call out the board and ask them what were y'all doing? Well, uh, Why didn't you? When did y'all know? When did y'all? This is real simple, though, uh, Brett. When did y'all know y'all were going to do this? Because it was when everybody left four days after. They they didn't yeah, come up four days. Like, you know what we need to do? Come on, man. <clears throat> you no way anybody can make me believe they didn't know what they were doing. No, they they knew they didn't they didn't wake up the next day and go oh, we're still short with you know the five percent fees uh, they they absolutely knew but they didn't tell you the know, legislature and, and, they didn't tell the public by the way the community colleges the community colleges board voted to not increase fees yeah. hats off to them I applauded that I, I gave them a, 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 a shout out of you know it, it, socially on uh, social media that you know well done that you're willing to tighten your belt and hang on because they know uh, how difficult it is right now on families and. They, they voted to not increase. So, but, you know, why does the LSU board feel like they need the increase? Well, because they're the LSU board. They but, can do what they want to do. But, but you know what's uh, frustrating? You know? you know what's frustrating? <laughs> I think you're going to agree with me. To make the comments that, well, we, we maybe, you know, we got to be careful doing this. we got to be careful with low and middle class income. What do you mean you have to be careful? It's too late. You passed it. Now, all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you feel bad about it? <clears throat> right. Come on, man. You and, knew. And, and like you said, they knew. Plenty days ahead of time, many days ahead of time, that they were going to do this. This was not something they went all of a sudden the day of, you know, we really need to get a little bit more money out of these people. No question about it. And and that, I think, is what was so appalling to me was that they even did this. The timing of doing it four days after the legislature's out, five days, whatever it was, just the whole timing of that smells. And, and and it's really shame on them for doing this. And and I agree with you. I think that some people across the state need to need to call this out and and challenge the board on this decision. And and um, my goodness, if by all means, don't reappoint them when they come back up because this is a terrible decision. And there's decisions they're going to be making moving forward. Let's change them out with somebody else. Uh, you know, and 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 get some new folks on there. Well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, this. But you know, you don't have to call. This is my opinion. You don't have to call any college presidents out. But what you do, you do have to change or challenge the people that actually did this. And the people well, that did agreed, this, the people that agreed, did this are wrong. My understanding, it's my understanding that the president of LSU put a lot of pressure on the LSU board to to increase the fees. So, so, so the LSU president has some skin in this game. Uh, but, but, but again... That's not unusual. College presidents are always trying to get funding for the university so they can do some things that they want to do. That's their job. I, I mean, you know, I don't necessarily think that that was, you know, a bad thing for a university president to go to the board and say, hey, we'd like to have an increase in fees, and here's what we want to do. We want to give all of our people a raise or whatever it is that they're going to do with it. It's the board's responsibility to, to hold the line on that. So, you, you know, I, I agree with you on that. I think the board needs to be challenged. Uh, and, and, and in my opinion, <laughs> the next governor uh, needs to look at replacing them as they come off with some other people. Yeah, it's it's just so frustrating to watch, knowing good and well we went through that whole session. You agree with me. We went through the whole session, okay? And they never said anything about uh Hey, Brett, they, uh, by the way, they did an article. They called you and interviewed you. And I thought one of the – you said a lot of good things in there, but the biggest thing I, I took out of it was when you said they ought to really base our government off of what our economy does. You basically said the economy goes, the government should go. And explain how that works because I don't think, I don't think the press and the, and the left and the Republican left, too, understand what you're talking about. Well, thank you, Moon. And that that the question in the interview was, do you think the legislature accomplished anything? And my answer was essentially no. 
other than just funding for the current environment that's there now. We didn't do any reform. We didn't do anything uh, long term to help the budget situation moving forward. And and my comment was that what I'd like to see the legislature do at some point is link spending and revenue to the economy. If the economy is growing at a particular rate, then government spending can grow at that particular rate and not anything more. Other states have done that and been very successful in it. Um, there's an economic study that's been done that, that I often refer to, you know, to prove this um, theory, uh, economic theory. And, they, and it says that if, if uh, the government revenue grows at a rate slower than the growth in your personal income, it has a substantial effect on economic gains, meaning that as long as you're not outgrowing the economy, um, the spending is not outgrowing the economy, <clears throat> the economy tends to boom. Mm-hmm. It tends to do well, which therefore increases the amount of money that comes into the government. And, and it, it, it's, it's proven to work. And if you look at the historical data of our spending uh, habits since 1990 moving forward, you can look at all your economic indicators of your personal income growth. And I, I know you talk about gross domestic product very often on the show. If you look at those indicators, it clearly shows that we're spending at a rate faster than what the economy can sustain. So therefore, Moon, what happens is in the next year or in the next two years, they're going to be coming back to the legislature and saying, hey, we're out of money again. Well, let me give you let me give you let me give you a backup on that, because Robert Travis Scott, you know, he's with poor now. Yes. I'm quoting him. I'm quoting him in Elizabeth Crispy's. Okay. quote Mm -hmm. in two years. A continuation budget, which is how much much government would spend to maintain a level of services, but also keep up with mandatory cost inflation, would be back at nearly one billion dollars in two years. That's Robert Scott right now telling us we got a billion dollar problem that nothing's been fixed. But all I've read is for the next seven years we got stability. We got stability yeah, for the next seven years. Yeah, well, first off, no one in their right mind can project seven years moving forward on no. what financial stability is going to be. So the folks that are saying that, it's just purely political. Uh, you can barely do one year, but yet alone, you know, seven. So, And, and I think Robert Travis Scott is 100% accurate on this. He, he does a lot of economic study when he does his pieces. Uh, he, he generally uh, lays out the facts and lets the people determine what, you know, what they will from that. But he's absolutely right. And, you know, if it's one year or two years or three years, but the government is growing faster than the economy. So what they did in this past session to pay for the current year needs will not maintain them for the next several years moving forward. Because they did no reform. They didn't link the economy and spending together like states have done across the country, uh, where the, the government can only grow as fast as the economy and it prohibits them from growing any faster. Uh, simple, simple fix, Moon. And, and we could easily do that. Uh, it, one bill, one constitutional amendment would do it, or, or amending a current constitutional amendment. Uh, it could very easily be done and would certainly uh, prevent us from these budget shortfalls in the, in the very near future. Yeah, yeah I, I think Medicaid has really crushed us. We've done no reform in Medicaid. There's proven as fraud. There's proven 84,000 people on it that shouldn't be on it. We, we just had a deal with a legislative auditor to win in there and said contracts all screwed up in the billions. And John Bell Edwards, Jay Darden, the co-governorship, will not touch Medicaid at all. No reforms, no changes, no nothing. Well, and again, you hit on something that's going to be another significant problem moving forward, because at some point the federal government will tell the state of Louisiana that we're no longer going to pay for 90 percent of your Medicaid expansion. So folks have to understand the Medicaid expansion raised the amount of eligibility of income and brought in a bigger group of people that were eligible for Medicaid. Uh, That's Obamacare in a nutshell. Uh, And the government was the federal government promised to pay 90 percent of it, which which that was the big carrot that they waved in front of us. So we did it. And now we've got more people on the roll. Okay, but the problem is at some point the federal government and and I've heard different years, but 2021, 2023, somewhere around that time, we'll come back to the states, all of them, and say, okay, your transition period is over. Now we're only going to match the normal match rate, which, if I'm not mistaken, is 60%. It may be 70, but somewhere in that range of 60 to 70. 
So now we're going to be on the hook for about six hundred million to a billion dollars a year yeah. of additional health care costs that we're not preparing for. I and mean, then we know it's coming. Yep. It's kind of like the retirement issue that you talk about. We know what's coming, but we're not doing anything to prepare. We're not doing anything to prepare for what's coming five years from now. We know that cliff is coming, and we're not doing anything to prepare for it. Instead, we're spending more money than the economy can sustain already. So yeah. imagine when that kicks in. CB said if he was still living, God bless him, 2029, when all that kicks in, he's gone because he's not going to be here for the overtaxation that's coming. No governor. No legislature has ever addressed unfunded accrued liability. None. And this new budget is not addressed it either, but you got people that call themselves, we are part of the media, especially the print media. We listen to us. We tell you all the truth. They won't even touch that. Matter of fact. Go ahead. No, go ahead. But no, I'll say the, the retirement issue is not a political game for anyone, so no one wants to deal with it. That's the truth of the matter. It is what it is. Nobody wants to, to, to have the courage to make the tough decisions on the retirement systems because it's not politically popular. It's not going to get you reelected. It may get you unelected. But the point is, in 2029, as you said, when the Constitution requires those payments to be funded, uh, you know, we're going to be in a bind. And everybody's going to look back and go, what did those guys do back there? Why didn't they take care of the problem? Uh-huh. Well, because it wasn't politically popular and the voters were not holding them accountable for it. Well, because it hadn't blown up in our face yet. That's when people right. freak out. By the way, if you want to defend me, <clears throat> uh, there was an article about, and I thought it was a good headline, Mark Ballard, history is not on Governor Bill Ever's size regarding re-election. I thought, I, my comment is, hey, Mark, I made that comment the day after he got elected. But I'll take a paragraph out if you want to defend me. Three days after the deal was passed, Taylor Barra told Moon Graffon, the right-wing <coughs> radio talk shows, by the way, that state government would rein in spending only when we change the person on the fourth floor. I hate to be that blunt, but that's the only thing that gets us off the off of that. Number one, I think Taylor was right on the money, but, man, they picking on little bitty me. You know how bad my feelings have been hurt when Brandon came in and saw me crying today when they said that about me? <laughs> Brandon had put his arm around me and said, it's going to be okay. Got me a Diet Coke and everything. He felt so bad. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> I said, come on, Mark, be tougher than that, my lord. The right wing, right wing talk show host <laughs> and former umpire. Yeah, former umpire. Former they ought umpire. to put that on there. By the way, uh, uh, Jer- Jeremy Offit hit, hit us the other day too, but he didn't hit us hard, so that was a good thing. But no, going back to what Barra said, I agree. I'm glad Taylor said it, and he did say it on the program. You better change the fourth floor. We don't change the fourth floor. People in this state don't realize. The amount of taxes that's coming. Jay Darden said. No, you're right. And, Jay, Jay Darden said in article today. It don't matter if Vitter was elected. We'd be going through the same thing. I don't believe that. I really don't believe that. We may have done a few things that I didn't like, but I don't think we would be going through the exact same thing of raising taxes, no. raising fees, and that's all we ever talk about. No, because you would have had somebody on the fourth floor that would have led the effort to make the future budget issues better. There is a transition, Moon, and, 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 you know, and the reality is you can't go from 100 to zero overnight. We all understand that. There is going to be a transition away from the habits that we've had for decades. <clears throat> but the point is we're not even heading in that direction right now. And as I look back over the legislative session, what it seems to be the void that I see is that there's no one that we can wrap our arms around and follow that's leading that charge. There are independent members in the legislature that are – saying the right things and voting the right way. But there's nobody that's leading yep. everybody Good under point. this umbrella to do this. Bobby Jindal didn't do it. He could have. I was yep. there during that time, and that was my biggest disappointment with him. I like the guy. He could have been the best governor ever. Instead, he chose to be what he was, and that was to not lead on these fiscal issues and do the necessary, th- necessary things that needed to be done. And that was my disappointment with him. But you certainly aren't going to have it now. Uh, we can only hope that the next governor would be willing to, to lead the legislature in that way because, you know, the governor has a lot of influence over getting people to vote for his or her agenda. And and that's, I think, what we're missing right now. Uh, and I think Taylor's right. You change a 4-4, um, and, you know, we still have problems, but at least we have a chance to head in the right direction. Well, I know this. You've got to stop the car going down a one-way street before you can turn it around. We didn't even apply the brakes. We didn't even try to apply the brakes. And i got to tell you, though, Brett, I don't care if they do a constitutional convention. I don't care what they do. If you don't curb the spending, 
and the spending problem we have. And all the people on the dole or working for government or, or getting a, a freebie. Uh, you're never going to change what's going on in the state of Louisiana. Our migration no. is real. No job creation is real. Those are real things going on in this state. If you don't have that, you'll never keep up with the massive amount of government spending. A billion dollars again in two years? Where are they going to get that money from, Brett? Yeah, no, they're going to raise your taxes again. I mean, so they're going to go after business. They're going to go after someone because there's no limit on what the legislature can do as far as spending money other than an expenditure limit that's in the Constitution that is so far out of whack that it's not even holding them down. And until you link it to the economy by law, where they're mandated they can only raise this much revenue because yep. this is what the economy says we can raise, we're not going to fix the problem long term. We're going to always be doing a Band-Aid patch on what's going on. Brett, always a pleasure, man. Uh, don't frame that picture of me umpire. I just want to let you know that. I, don't frame that put that over your desk. I, I, that's a promise. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I don't even have to Thank ask you, you. I didn't even have to even ask you, did I? No, it's it's going to be deleted as soon as I hang up. <laughs> Brett Guyman, always a player. Thanks, Brett.